Dragon Shield just came out with their new dual sleeves, which are just like their other sleeves, except they have a black background instead of a white background when you put your cards in there. So they're super slick looking and they have a clear glossy front. So it shows off all your foils really well. Check them out on dragonshield.com. Use my affiliate link down below. It helps support the channel. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Budget EDH. I'm your host, Mike. And on this week's episode, we bring you Sithis Harvest Hand out of Modern Horizons. Sithis is a green and a white for a legendary creature that has whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life and draw a card. Sithis has a very powerful ability that whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you're going to draw a card and you also gain a life, which is nice as well. So with this deck, we're going to lean heavily into that archetype. We're going to play Enchantress with this deck. So you're going to see all the Enchantresses in here that whenever you play enchantment, you're going to draw cards. So every single one in these colors is in this deck. So we're going to be drawn a ton of cards over the course of the game. Sithis also works well with enchantments, of course. So we're going to be playing a lot of auras in this deck. You're going to see that there's a Voltron sub theme that we can either suit up Sithis or some of the other creatures that give us some additional value when we put auras on them as well to get in for damage and kill our opponents. This deck can spiral out of control quickly because you can play a ton of enchantments draw cards off all your enchantresses and accrue a lot of value over the course of the game. We do have a token sub theme. So there is cards that when you play enchantments, you'll be able to put tokens onto the board. So you can go wide in this deck as well, in addition to going tall, which is really nice. And then we're going to win this game through combat, either by going tall with suiting up one of our creatures with a ton of auras or by going wide with all of our tokens. You'll see in this deck too, we've got some ways of bringing those enchantments back if our opponents get rid of them as well. Next up, let's go over the stats of this deck. So we've got 14 ramp spells in here. We've also got eight card draw spells. I do want to make a note that while we only have eight card draw spells, they're very powerful spells that have card draw on them. Most of these are going to be our enchantresses, which can draw you multiple cards per turn. So if you add the card draw plus the enchantments, which I'm going to go over in a second, that's the potential amount of card draw that we actually have in this deck with an enchantress on the board. We've also got 11 ways of interacting with our opponents. We've got 28 enchantments spells in here, 21 auras, and then we've got 37 lands. The asterisk there is because one of them is a modal double face card, which I almost put in every single green deck. Let's get into the deck tech. So first up, we're going to talk about the ramp in this deck, and I'm only going to go over the ones that are relevant. It's going to be the auras and some of the interactions that we have with the auras in here. So first up, we've got Arbor Elf. It taps to untap a forest. Now this is nice in this deck because we do have some auras in here, which I'll go over in a second, that you can put on a forest and get additional mana out of them. So being able to untap wild growth, which I'm about to go over here in a second to get two green mana instead of just one off of that forest is very powerful with this card. And it's the only mana dork that I put in here just because of that synergy that it has with auras. So next up, we've got wild growth and fertile growth. If you tap them, it adds an additional one mana to your mana pool. Then we've got wolf willow haven, which is similar adds an additional green mana. You can also cash this in to get a two, two green wolf later in the game too, if you don't need that additional mana. Then we've got herald of the pantheon. This is going to reduce the enchantment spells you cast by one. And then Sanctum Weaver is a very powerful mana dork that gives you X mana of any one color where X is the number of enchantments you control. So very, very powerful in an enchantment based deck. Then we've got Starfield Mystic and Danitha Capation. Both of these are going to reduce your enchantment spells or aura and equipment spells by one. We've also got Overgrowth in here as well as another aura that you can put on your land to get two additional mana as well. Next up, let's go over some of the interaction that we have in this deck. Now, I'm not going to go over all the interaction. We do have more in addition to what you see here. I'm really going to go over the auras in this deck because they're the most relevant cards to include in here because we want auras that have interaction on them so that we can draw additional cards off our enchantresses. But there are a couple of board wipes in here as well and a couple of single targeted removals like Swords to Plowshares, Generous Gift, Beast Within that are good in pretty much any green or white deck. Check the deck list down below if you want to check out the full deck list. I'm just going to go over some of the key cards in this video. So first up, we've got Kenris Transformation and Dark Steel Mutation. These are both auras that turn your opponent's creature creatures into smaller or weaker creatures, and then they also lose all their abilities as well. So you can put this on one of your opponent's commanders, and if they have a relevant ability on the commander, it's just going to turn them into a bug or an elk, and they're not going to be able to use their abilities, which can effectively turn them off unless they have some sort of enchantment removal, which is really nice. And I really like Kenris Transformation because it actually draws you a card as well. So it replaces itself too. So just two really great interactive pieces in here. Then we've got Seal of Primordium and Seal 
deal with cleansing. Opted to go with these because they're enchantments. So they enter the battlefield. They're going to draw you a card if Sithis or one of your other enchantresses is on the battlefield. And you can also cash them in later to get rid of a problematic artifact or enchantment as well. Then we've got a couple of other removal spells here in Oblivion Ring and Banishing Light. And there's a lot more of these that you can actually put in your deck if you want to go heavier on the removal. But we decided to go more on the Aura and Voltron theme with this deck because we wanted a way to win the game that is more budget friendly. These are really nice because their enchantments, obviously, so they're going to draw you additional cards with your enchantresses. And they also exile any non-land permanent, so not just creatures. So they get rid of pretty much anything on the board and until they leave the battlefield. So your opponent's going to have to use a card to get their card back, which is really nice with these. Next up, we're going to go over all the card draw that we have in this deck. And most, if not all of these, are going to be enchantresses. So cards that when you play an enchantment, you get to draw a card. First up, we've got Shram, Senior Edificer. If you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, you can draw a card. Or Spirit Dancers, pretty much the same thing, except it only works off of auras. And then Seder Enchanter works off of any enchantment spell, you get to draw a card as well. Then we've got Mace Enchantress, Verdurin Enchantress, and Satessian Champion. All of these, whenever you cast or an enchantment spell enters the battlefield, you can draw a card. Satessian Champion also gets bigger with every enchantment spell that enters the battlefield under your control. And then we've got Enchantress's Presence, which is basically the same thing, but on an enchantment. And then Eidolon of Blossoms is an enchantment creature that also has the same ability. So these are all really great card draw engines in addition to your commander that you have in the command zone as well, that you get down one or two of these, you start playing your auras and your other enchantments, and you're going to start gaining a ton of value over the course of the game, and things are going to start spiraling out of control quickly unless one of your opponents is able to deal with it. Next up, let's go over the auras that we have in this deck, and we have some that are really great for an offensive strategy like Voltron, and we have others that are kind of a combo type engine as well, so we'll go over those here as well. So first up, we've got Whip Silk. This is a really cheap, it only costs one green mana, aura that enchanted creature may block as though it had lying, which you may say, why the heck is this in the deck? The really nice thing about this card is it also has the ability down below where you can pay a green and you can return it to its owner's hand. So if you, ha if you have an enchantress or two on the battlefield, you can actually just keep returning this to your hand and drawing cards when you replay it, which is really nice. Flickering Reward does the exact same thing. So it gives your creature protection, which is actually a little bit better than Whip Silk, but it has the same ability where you can return it to your hand. So the idea with this is you're just going to keep returning it to your hand and replaying it and draw a bunch of cards off your enchantresses and accrue a bunch of additional value if you've got nothing better to do with your hand. Next up, we've got Rancor, which is a really powerful card. It gives Enchanted Creature plus two plus zero and Trample. Trample is really good because we want some sort of evasion to get in with our big voltron creature. And then when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you can return it to your hand. So you can actually keep replaying this if it gets killed and get that additional value off your Enchantresses as well. Next up, we've got Ethereal Armor and All That Glitters. These are really nice because they're going to buff up your creature for the amount of enchantments on the battlefield. All that glitters also works off of artifacts as well. So some of our rant that we have in here, like Soul Ring and some of the other artifacts we have, which we don't have many, but it will pump your creature up with those as well. With 28 enchantments in the deck, these cards can get out of control pretty quickly and be able to buff your creature up to that lethal level. If you put this on Sithis, you can get in for that 21 pretty easily with these cards. Next up, we've got some evasion. We've got Spirit Mantle. It gives an enchanted creature plus one plus one and protection from creatures. So you'll be able to swing in and your opponents won't be able to block. So they'll have to have some sort of removal spell to get rid of Sithis as well. Then we've got Daybreak Coronet. This is a nice cost efficient aura that gives your creature plus three plus three and first strike vigilance lifeling only costs two mana. It, it does have the downside that you have to enchant a creature that already has an aura on it. If this is the first aura that you have in your hand that you want to play, you won't be able to play this, but it's not going to happen very often in this deck. Next up, we've got Ancestral Mass. This is another one that's going to pump your creatures for the amount of enchantments on the battlefield. So not just your enchantments, but any enchantment on the battlefield, this is going to pump your creature plus two plus two. This one is one of the better ones. It's going to pump your creature up a ton. Then we've got Shield of the Oversoul. This one's going to give your creature indestructible and flying and also plus one plus one as long as it's green and or white. Then we've got Armadillo Cloak and Unflinching Courage. These give your creature plus two plus two. Armadillo Cloak has the text that whenever enchanted creature deals damage, you gain that much life and Unflinching Courage has lifelink. And it is important to note that those aren't the same thing. So if 
you have both Armadillo Cloak and Unflinching Courage on the same creature, you'll actually gain the life twice. Armadillo Cloak has the old templating that is not actually lifelink. Next up, we've got Shielded by Faith. Shielded by Faith is a great card by itself because it's going to protect your creatures, but we also have a combo in here that works really well with Siona, Captain the Pileus. So Siona has the ability, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield and is attached to a creature, you're going to create a 1-1 token. So you can play this on Siona. Siona is going to generate a 1-1 token, then Shielded by Faith, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may attach it to that creature. So you can actually attach this to the token that just entered the battlefield. And then Siona is going to trigger because it sees that another token entered the battlefield. It sees that an aura attached a creature and it's going to create another token. You can just do that over and over again. This is a really nice two card combo in the deck. Now we don't have any ways of giving those tokens haste. So you will have to pass the turn and hope that none of your opponents board wipe you. But it is just a nice little combo that's in here. And both of the cards have value on their own. So we're not just straight going for that combo win in here. Both Siona and Shielded by Faith are both great in the deck on their own, but it is a nice combo if you do get both of them in your hand at once. Next up, let's talk about some of the utility cards that we have in here. So the first set of cards are cards that are going to help us protect our enchantments on the battlefield. So first up, we've got Al Seed of Life's Bounty. This is an enchantment creature that has, you can pay one and sack it. Target creature enchantment you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Destiny Spinner's in here because it gives creature enchantment spells you control can't be countered, which is really, really powerful. And this card has gone up in price quite a bit since it was first released. It's $2.50 for an uncommon because it's so powerful. Next up, we've got Sterling Grove, which thankfully was just reprinted in Modern Horizons. And this is an enchantment for two mana that other enchantments you control have Shroud. They can't be targets of spells or abilities. And you can pay one and sack it. You could search your library for an enchantment card, reveal it, and then shuffle it and put it on top. One thing to note with this is this does give Shroud. So Shroud can be problematic because you can't put auras on other enchantments you control. So like if you wanted to put an aura on Destiny Spinner with Sterling Grove out, you wouldn't be able to because it can't be the target of any spells or abilities, including your own. It's not like Hexproof where Hexproof only gives, can't be target of spells or abilities by opponents you control. So you do have to be careful with this because you won't be able to target it. This is also really nice too. If your opponent's able to remove this, you can pay one, sack it, and search your library for another enchantment card and put it on the top of your deck, which is nice as well. Next up, we've got Siona, Captain the Pileus. So this is a very powerful card in its own right. It also combos up with Shielded by Faith, which we talked about earlier in the video. When it enters the battlefield, you can look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. So this is one of the token creators that we have in here. It's also great because it actually finds you some auras off the top of your deck as well. We did make a commander deck tech off of this when it first came out as well. So I'll link that here as well if you want to check that out. There's some newer cards that probably need to be put in there by now because it came out a couple years ago and there's been so many good cards that have come out since then. Next up, we've got Heliod's Pilgrim. It enters the battlefield. You can search your library for an aura card, reveal it, and put it in your hand. It's a nice tutor that's really cheap and cost efficient. And then we've got Calyx Destiny's Hand. This is another way to look at the top of your library and reveal an enchantment card and put it into your hand. This also can exile creatures or enchantments you don't control until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. This also helped with its ultimate of returning all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's a nice way of getting all your enchantment cards back. In addition to that, we do have a couple of other cards that have the same ability. So we've got Resurgent Belief and Open the Vaults. These are going to return all your enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Open the Vaults returns artifacts as well. These are both great. They're cheap ways of returning all your powerful enchantments back to the battlefield. Something like Replenish is like $100 or something. Maybe it's more than that now. I'm actually not sure. And this is a nice cost-effective way of having that ability. Then we've got Nylea's Colossus. I'll be honest, this is one of the pet cards of mine. I like putting this in my Enchantress decks. I just think it's really powerful. It doesn't see a whole lot of play, but I do like it. It's a seven mana enchantment creature, so it kind of costs a lot, but it does have a powerful ability in a Voltron deck. That's why I put it in here. It's got Constellation. Whenever Nylea's Colossus or another enchantment enters the battlefield in your control, you can double target creature's power and toughness until end of turn. So while it's not the most powerful card ever, I do like it a lot. Whenever I play it, it has a very powerful ability. Maybe it's the Timmy and me that likes playing this card, but I do feel like it has a home in this deck. 
And then next up, we've got a couple other ways of creating tokens. In addition to Siona, we've got Archon of Sun's Grace. So whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield in your control, you can create a 2-2 white Pegasus with flying. And then it also gives Pegasus creatures you control lifelink as well. And then we've got Sigil of the Empty Throne. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you can create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. Next up, let's go over some of the upgrades that I would put in this deck. And I'm going to talk about five cards that you can put into this deck to make it a little bit more powerful that are non-budget considerations. So the intention of this is if you start out with this base deck, this is around $100 and you want to upgrade it down the road and put some more cards in as you get more funds or you trade with your friends, etc. You can go and start to buy these cards and they're going to make your deck more powerful. Now, I'm not going to particularly tell you which cards to take out because I'm going to leave that up to you, but I would look at some of the cards that are either higher converted mana cost because you want to lower that curve to make it a little bit more powerful or some cards that don't have as powerful as effect as some of these. First up, we've got Argothian Enchantress. So this is another Enchantress card that costs two mana. It's got Shroud on it so it makes it very difficult for your opponents to remove it and has the same text as the other enchantresses whenever you cast an enchantment spell draw a card now you want the maximum amount of these that you can put in your deck so this is the last one that we can put in here that has similar text that whenever you cast an enchantment you can draw a card now this one's very expensive this one is a $40 card it hasn't been reprinted since eternal masters where it dropped in price quite a bit and with the rise of enchantress decks in both commander and also in modern and other formats as as well this card has gone up in price since it was reprinted next up we've got hall of heliod's generosity this is a land that was just reprinted in modern horizons 2 as an alternate frame version of the card and this is a very powerful legendary land that has a ability where you can put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library now, this is really nice if your opponents are able to get rid of some of your auras or some of your removal enchantment spells like oblivion ring or banishing light you can actually get those back and have have a way of getting those powerful enchantments out of your graveyard. And this card's actually not that expensive. It's only $7. We didn't have room in the original list for it, but this is a great card to take out one of your planes and put this in its place and get that additional value off of it. Next up, we've got Privileged Position. This is great in an enchantment deck. It's quite a bit expensive. This is an $18, $19 card. It was reprinted in the Guilds of Ravnica guild kit in the Selesnya one, and it did drop in price quite a bit. I want to say at least least in half, maybe more, when it was reprinted and has quickly gone up since the reprint because not much supply came in those guild kits. There weren't that many of them open. And this card is an enchantment that other permanents you control can't be the targets of speller abilities your opponents control. So very powerful. It forces your opponents to have enchantment removal to get rid of this. If you play this in addition to Sterling Grove, your opponent can't get rid of any of your permanents unless they have something like a board wipe, which is an extremely powerful two card combo. Next up, we've got everybody's favorite white card. We've got Smothering Tithe. If you're in white, you should just play this card it's that simple it's $32 for a reason it just came out in guilds of ravnica it was reprinted in the brawl deck where it went down in price to like 10 bucks and then quickly rose from there it's a enchantment that whenever an opponent draws a card that player may pay two if the player doesn't you can create a colorless treasure artifact token it's very annoying to play against your opponents are always going to ask you if you want to pay two and they're not going to pay two you're just going to get three treasures each rotation of the turn unless your opponents draw more cards so very powerful to help ramp you up into some very powerful turns. And then last but not least, we've got Aura Shards. It's an enchantment that whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, you can destroy target artifact or enchantment. So we've got 18 creatures in here. This is a great card to include to be able to destroy some of your opponent's artifacts or enchantments. This one has been reprinted a couple of times recently, so it has gone down in price. It's about $10. Thank you so much for watching this budget deck tech today. If you have any suggestions for some of the picks in this deck or agree with or disagree with some of the choices, let us know in the comments comments down below. If you like this video, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And check us out on Patreon over at patreon.com slash There's a lot of different tiers for rewards over on Patreon. See you guys next time.